their hands, let us be joyful together before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness. He shall judge the world and the people with equity. Now, nothing else touches the heart of God more than a heart that sings to him. Absolutely nothing. A heart that sings is the secret of moving to answer your prayers. The Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. Then again, Jesus told the woman of Samaria, he said, but the hour is come. Now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeker or seeking such to worship him. For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The secret of touching the heart of God is the weapon of singing. Singing is so important to God, more than even prayers. God himself admitted by saying, I have found a man after my own heart. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil, I anointed him. Why? David is a gifted musician and silent and he created a song with lyrics that touches the heart of God. He just touched the heart of God. Amen. And, and, and in, 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 in other words, in times of adversity and in times of victory, God Almighty was his priority in every aspect of his life. David put God first. He did not put people first. God was his highest strong. God was his strong tower. God was his rock. God was his salvation. God was his refuge. God was his fortress. God was his righteousness, leader of the valley, comforter, help, counselor, deliverer, and strength. In everything, David gave preeminence to God. The reason why the Bible said that uh, I am I found a man after my own heart. Hallelujah. Yet David was one of the worst sinners in the world. He committed adultery and conceived a child with Bathsheba out of wedlock. Then he played Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, on the front line of war and had him killed. How come? What a worst sin. Look at that. Yet God said, this is a man after my own heart. Why did God say all this about David? David was quick to admit and confess his sins. He was also honest about mistakes and wrongdoing. David was honest about it. He, was, he, he did not even make excuses, but he also asked for forgiveness. That was David. He's not like you and I. Who tried to hide excuses? His prayers lifestyle was amazing and powerful. He knew how to touch the heart of God. And the, and the most important thing, he, was, he had the mind of the Holy Spirit. He knew how to touch the mind of the Holy Spirit. He asked questions and to what, how God should do things for him. Praise God. That was David, a king, a prophet, a psalmist. Who won the very heart of God? He created songs that touches the heart of God. Hallelujah. And he sings directly to the Holy Spirit. He never sang to man. The Holy Spirit was his priority. Did you know that almost 75% of the book of Psalms and prayers were written by him? including the children of Israel during uncertainty and a time of trouble, hallelujah, and an expression of thanksgiving and appreciation for victory and deliverance. Read a book of Psalms. You will see songs of praise. You will see songs of worship. That was David. He loved the Lord. David loved the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want to give you the seven reasons every Christian should know about singing to the Holy Spirit. You don't sing to man. You don't sing to kings. 
You don't sing to princes, but you sing directly to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that God come to inhabit, in other words, to dwell in the praise of his people. Many people in the church cannot imagine the importance of singing to the Holy Spirit. Singing to the Holy Spirit is so crucial. It turns things around your life more than even praying. Singing is a powerful weapon of the Holy Spirit. Let's begin right now. Weapon number one. According to the book of Psalm 100 verse 2. The Holy Spirit wants you to sing when you enter into his presence. Notice what the Bible says. Come before his presence with singing. That's what it says. Come before his presence, not with prayer, not with the list of your petition. Amen. But come before his presence with singing. You know, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Then not in verse 4. He says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. So the begin, it begins with entering into his presence with what? With what? Entering into his presence with singing. And then into his court, into his gate with thanksgiving and then into his court with praise. Three things that you have to do. He didn't say that enter into his presence with prayer. Because God comes and inhabits the praise of, of his people. We need to understand that. Then when you enter into his presence, the next thing is to enter into his gate. There are steps to get to the presence of God. Once you enter into his gate, you enter there with thanksgiving, not with your list of prayers, not asking God for anything, because God comes to inhabit the praise of his people, and then into his court with praise, and then he said, be thankful and bless his name. Singing is the gateway, singing is the doorway into the presence of God. Sounds, it sounds so beautiful and wonderful to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the bears today as they sing out in the wonderment. Listen to the sounds of the animals as they cry in the forest. Praise God. And listen to the bears, the wind that is blowing through the trees, and even the wonderful love sound of those family members close to you. Singing is an essential part of their world. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit wants you to be aware of his fervent desire to hear you sing to him. Weapon number two. Singing precedes miracles. Miracle does not come before singing. When you sing, it brings a birth miracle. Now here, we read from the book of... Um, 2 Kings chapter 3, 15. Prophet Elisha used musical instrument to call the presence of God. In times of war, three leaders, being a king Jehoshaphat of Judah, and then king of Israel, and then king of Edom, they needed water for their cattle in the, in the presence of the war. And their cattle were thirsty, they needed water to drink. So now one of the servants of the king said that there is a prophet by the name Elisha. Let's go. Maybe by peradventure he will be able to tell us he had God in his life and he will be able to tell us what to do. Notice what the Bible said. That, but now bring me when they got to the presence of Elisha. Elijah said bring me a minstrel. A minstrel is a type of a musical instrument. That's the first thing Elijah requested for. He didn't start to minister. Miracles were not for me. But he said, bring me a mystery. And it came to pass when the mystery played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, that said the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For that said the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with the water that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. Notice, 
Elijah, Elijah called for mystery, a musical instrument, and he played it. Why? It brought the presence of the Holy Spirit. If you watch most prophets, anytime they have to minister, they have to sing song. If there is a choir, they will minister the song. Why? Because when they minister the song, it brings the presence of the Holy Spirit. Elijah minister, Elijah minister in such an awesome and right after the presence of God came, he said, that say the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. That say the Lord. And the hand came upon him. And then when he said, that say the Lord, this valley will be full of ditches. For that say the Lord, ye shall not need to see the wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. And that's what happened exactly according to the prophetic word and prophetic utterance of Elisha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Weapon number three. Focus your singing to the Holy Spirit instead of people. David the Psalmist the sweet singer of Israel is no exception. At any time he plays the harp instrument and sing, it brings the presence of God and he shows up. Psalm 103, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. If you read the book of Psalm, you will find that. David saw, claimed that he was looking for David to kill him. And he instructed his military. Whether they find David alive or dead, they should bring David. But David was hiding in the Philistine backyard, in their rocks, in their forest. But they never ever could lay hands on David. David was a worshiper. It's one of those times that David sang the song, Bless the Lord, O my soul. He wrote this word, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Notice what David is saying. He said, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Let my kidneys, let my blood, let my heart, let my mind, let everything about me bless the Lord. This is a man whose heart is after God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wrote again, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green party. He leadeth me beside the soul waters. This is David. David had the heart of God. David always sing to the Lord. He sing directly to the Holy Spirit. That is the reason why God's heart was after David. Because he knew how to touch the heart of God. David was a singer. David was a psalmist. David was a prophet. David was a king. David was a musician. But all these accolades that he had, he was not boastful, but he was humble. He used it to the glory of the Lord. Can I hear amen on somebody? Yes, if God is on your side and you begin to sing, and you don't sing to man to glorify man, it's the reason why when we come to church, the choir is so important. The choir is an instrument of bringing the presence of God, bringing the glory of God. Even when you read the book of Ezekiel, the Bible said that Satan used to be called Lucifer, and he was the praise and worship leader. As a praise and worship leader, he is the one who will bring the anointing of God in the presence of God in the fire, where the presence of God is where there is fire. It was Lucifer who was a praise and worship leader. If you read the book of Ezekiel, it tells you. He was a praise and worship leader, and he had a congregation. He has a, this congregation who were singing and he was leading. Praise God. Praise God. This is the reason why most churches we can see the glory of God. Because uh, we have put praise and worship aside. And we are listening to eloquent preachers. We are listening to uh, preachers with P.A.D. That's not what God is looking for. God is looking for where his presence will be there. So the prophetic utterance will come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at weapon number four. Weapon number four. Turn with me to the book of Psalm 89. Glory be to God. Psalm 89. 